fear. I thought God was telling us, sort of implied to me this week, that I should talk about watching and pray. Okay. Now, I think we are all, we're all pretty good at praying, but are we very good at watching? Mm. I thought it was the watching bit that he was really talking about. Mm. You know, we can, we can utter a prayer to God at any moment, any time, whether driving the car or what. Mm. But what is our watching like? Is it sort of, can it um, um, be, we've prayed but we don't kind of watch? You know, Jesus said to his disciples just before the, his crucifixion, all of you who must keep awake, give strict attention, be cautious and active, and watch and pray that you may not come into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. How many people found that out? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So he's really saying, hey, watch. You know, you know when he said these words, he's going to the, going to the cross? Yes. And he was sort of, was it the evening before? So, and he's saying to his disciples, watch and pray that you don't enter in temptation. So what was the temptation, do you think? I mean, I've got my idea of what the temptation was. But my idea of the temptation is this. I mean, Jesus even had the temptation himself to not go there, right? Yeah. Because he said, yeah. nearly died. Yeah. I, I feel like I'm dying because of sorrow. But I believe the temptation for the disciples was this. I'll be, I'll be gone in two days, you won't see me. And the temptation is, you might forget about all we've done. Mm. It might be as if it's never been. Mm. The temptation to just drift, drift away and say, well, what was that about? We, we walked three years with a man and then um, now hang on the cross and put him in the grave. Um, and he's gone. And he's gone. Would that be a temptation? Would he see? Would Jesus see that as a temptation these guys could encounter? I mean, I might be wrong with this. It could have been some other temptation. I don't know what the temptation was. But the, the temptation to just forget what I gave you, forget what I showed you, to forget that I was the Son of God, that I was God clothed, I was, uh, uh, I was God clothed in flesh. So I think he, so he's saying, watch out. Okay, you pray, but watch out you don't get there. Watch Amen. out you don't, this doesn't happen to you. Amen. He said another one in, he, he said another one in Mark 13, I think it's the same. Keep away and watch and pray constantly that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, the flesh is weak. One of these is in Matthew 26, 14, and the other one is in Mark 14, 38. So the spirit indeed is willing. So it's, it's about the spirit is willing. But it's got this, we've got this uh, combination of spirit enclosed with flesh. And he said this, the flesh is weak. It's liable to yield to temptation. It's liable to override the spirit part and, and lead you uh, away from what I've been telling you about. I think that's what he was saying, really. Whether that's, so we've got this, this tension all the time between the spirit wanting to lead us to good paths and the flesh wanting to take us in a bad path. Yes. And he actually, Jesus knew about this. I think he knew that even from being in flesh with himself, he knew this dilemma. So watch. So what? Um, so what have we got to watch out for? What are we on the watch for? Um, I uh, I just marked a thing here that. But understand this, it's not, it's gained him, that had the householder known at what time or morning that the thief was coming, he would have watched and not allowed the house to be broken into. 
the sort of illustrations of what, and I, I mean, I don't really think, to be honest, I have the ability to impart what this is really about, right? But I'm trying. Is that right? Um, I noticed Paul said in Hebrews 12, 15, exercise foresight and be on the watch to look after one another. Yes. Watch watch to look after each other. You know, I'm glad that other people watch to look after me, and I'm, I'm, I'm believing that in some way I can look after one another. Yes. I'm, I'm believing that in some way I can watch over to be able to help people. Yes. I'm believing that. Yes. You see, yes. many years ago, I was in England, I can't remember the name of the town, and my friend, we were camped at a friend's place, he was a farmer, and he said to me one day, I'm going out tonight, I'm a street pastor. I don't, I've never heard of street pastors in New Zealand, but in England, throughout the country, there are street pastors. And what do you think a street pastor does? He does the thing on the street that is needful for people that need a bit of help. So they dress up in visual jackets with, and across the front is called street pastor on the back of the front. And we go, and he said, you want to come with me for the night? So I said, oh yeah, I'll come out with you. I don't know whether they had a visual jacket or not. So there's about four of us went out on the street. And the thing was to find people that had a need. Like we're looking for people that had OD'd in the park, you know. We're looking for people that, um, I, I think we supplied fresh needles, I can't remember if somebody was on drugs. I can't remember if we did that or not. Um, and we wandered around and we met a lot, of, a lot of youngish kids that really, to be honest, had lost their way. And they were just on the banks of the canal and amongst some trees doing whatever they do there. And we, we carried a bottle of water with us to give them water if they needed it. That, that, was, that was what a street pastor was doing. You know, we need some street pastors here in New Zealand. And I don't know whether we have street pastors. But it's obviously a movement right through England that all these cities have street pastors. Because not that many people are wandering around at night trying to help somebody that's, that, that some people think shouldn't be bothered to be helped. Street pastors are doing that. Salvation Army. So, um, so we wandered around and we gave water to people, we, we gave um, help and encouragement, talked to, talked to these, most of them were younger people, but hey, they had lost their way. They were people God loves just as much as you and I. And we, did, we spent the night, I don't know what time I got back, at about five o'clock in the morning, oh no, I don't think it's that late, maybe two or three in the morning, everybody sort of done whatever they're doing and there wasn't anybody left around. But I'll still remember that experience. And that, I think, is watching after one another. Watching. Let's not be... Let's be attentive to, to the needs. I mean, you can probably be on the street in the car and see something like that. I've never been on the streets in the car or late at night to see what's going on. But I know the Salvation Army tried to do something. But watch. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. So anyway, this, this experience on the uh, watching over one another, it's, it's, it's neat actually. You know, watching, watching um, praying and watching, <coughs> and life is, we live in a strange world, you know, in a real strange world. It's a world that we need to be watching things. I, I had an email from a friend the other day and said, oh, please, can I, and it said something like, can I trouble you for something? And I thought, well, uh, that's my friend's email, but is it my email? Is, it, is that him? So I had this dilemma in my head, will I answer or not? Because if it's him, I need to do something. If it's not him, then I've got a problem. So I, so I said, hi, how are you? Something like that. Didn't, didn't address the fact that he could do something. But I got an email back 
about a week later. And he said, and this email went something like, my car has run out of something and I need to get a, um, I need to get for my grandmother or something, a present from Apple. Like it must have been a voucher or something. Would you do this? And I thought, both said, and I discussed this thing. I said, no, this is not my friend. This is using his email, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I remember one time I was going to town. Now, I don't know if you know, but you do know that it comes on a car. Is your car is it diesel, John? Or not? Is it a diesel? It's not. But I remember about 20, 15 years ago, I, I, I had this feeling I'd like to have a diesel car. And uh, do you remember when the big Dats and Nissan six cylinder diesels were around? I think they're called. Nissan Crowns, I think, if I remember right. And they were pretty big, big. They were quite a luxury old car. And I saw this one advertised down in um, Tramway Motors. You know the tramway, on Tramway Road, there's Tramway Motors? I'm not sure. Down South City. Yeah, well, there's, a, there's, a, there's a garage there called Tramway Motors. And so this was advertised there. So I'm, I decided I'd go and Oh, I'm going to have a diesel car, I'm not going to buy this. So I'm walking along Tramway Road. I actually have no idea why I was walking along Tramway Road. And I got within about 100, 100 200 metres of this garage. And a thumb came down in front of me like this. Like that. What does that mean? Oh. <laughs> Anybody that sees somebody do that, what does it mean? You're going under. <laughs> well, it means don't. It's, I mean, that's good and that's bad. Okay. It, it wasn't like it was visually outside of my body, but inside of my head, it was there in front of me. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. And you know what? I turned around and didn't even go in that garage. I knew God had just, God just said no. You know, sometimes we need to be responsible for that. And I mean, this stuff is pretty subtle. It does, it's not a big, it, it's there and it's gone. You know, some of that stuff that God wants to impart to us is very, very quick. And we need to be watching out for this kind of thing to catch it. Otherwise, I would have a probably nasty old diesel that I didn't want. Watch, watching, watching. Praise the Lord. <laughs> You know, there's some strange stuff there. Oh, look, I heard the other day that the American defense system, a lot of its components are made in China. Can you imagine having your defense system made by what appears to be an enemy to America? What, how crazy could that be? You think of the implications. They need to put a defect in there, and their defense system doesn't work. If the Chinese are, are clever enough to do all things, and that wouldn't be hard. So, I mean, um, just we just need to watch out. You know, there's, there's a lot of minds out there that want to, that are not particularly healthy, uh, wired up healthily. And they're looking for ways to take take you down, especially the the scams from Nigeria, because we've got computers now. We're open to all this crap, crazy stuff. Are we watching? Keep watching, watching, watching. If you, when you leave this room, one thing you should remember: watch. You now I've got to watch here. How that name comes to be the same thing? Um, do you know on the ships? Didn't they, didn't they, in Jesus' day, didn't they say they're on the first watch, second watch, or third watch? They, they were, what were they watching for on that ship? They still do. They do. What do they watch? What do they watch? What? What does it mean? Well, they watch. They're so, they're, so they're looking. So they're looking for something that's detrimental to that ship. Maybe a reef. Maybe another ship. So, can we we be encouraged to watch today? I know this is kind of like a, um, what's it like? It's like an instruction, really. 
I mean, so God talks us all about nice things, loving and all that, but sometimes he talks about something serious. Watch, 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 watch and pray. Um, there were five people. I'll just read this. There were five people involved with this pro uh, project. There were four of them in the know about stuff, and the one, uh, one of them was not in the know about what they were doing. Right? And they were asked a question. The whole five of them were asked a question about what this and all of them the four all answered it was an obvious question what's the harder it was a very apparent what the answer was right four of them answered it wrongly deliberately made it wrong the first four and the last one the fifth one didn't know what these four were doing and he had to answer that question <coughs> Now, he didn't know the other guys were part of a scheme. And do you know what? The answer was absolutely so obvious. And do you know what he did? Because the other four answered it wrong, he answered it wrong. When it was obvious that that question, the answer to that question, he would have got it right easy. But what do you call that? What is that? The mob mentality. Uh, the mob mentality? Is yeah, now, do you understand what I'm saying here? Yeah, I just come out and talk, so I'm not oh, sure. Well, I'm there were, it was, I don't know whether it was in a hall, whether it was on, on something. They were all asked a question. Four of them knew what this was about yeah. and one didn't. <coughs> right. And the four of them all answered the question wrong because they were made to answer it wrong. They knew what, they were in this scheme. Right. This is an experiment. Yeah. So they all answered it wrong. But the fifth one was the last one. And he saw how, how they all answered. Even despite, and despite seeing what the correct answer was, he put down what they put down without using his brain to actually answer correct. And you know what they said? This, they've done this experiment lots of times. They found that 75% of the people did that. Now that's pretty serious, isn't it? He either one of two things. He actually didn't want to look different to him the other ones, or else he followed and decided, decided, well, they must know more than him. But, hey, listen, God wants us to be individuals to see the obvious and work with that. The, the mob kind of mentality yes. there was that I don't want to be seen to be different there. Hey, God's calling us to, to, a, a, to an exciting light, but not to be controlled by you said that quite a good word, mob mentality. Mm. Yeah, that's quite a good word. Hey, but if you've got anything out of this, I've got a lot of other stuff here, but I don't know if people leave that. Um,